Hey guys, welcome to the Midweek Minute from here at Hope Church. I just wanted to take a minute just to recap some things that we talked about on Sunday. Um, We started a new series called Christianese 101, translating the language of the church. We talked about a couple things. First thing we talked about was holiness. We talked about holiness and righteousness and what those things truly mean. So let me just start with a verse real quick, just kind of get the ball rolling. 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. I want to stress something really important to you today. As Christians, we're not called to be good people. We're not called to be better people. We're not called to be a good person. You weren't called to be less of a sinner. You were called to be holy. You were called to walk in holiness in all of your ways. And see, most people don't have a good definition for the word holiness, but holiness simply means just to be set apart for the purposes of God, to be distinguished, to be different, right? To be set apart for the purposes of God, not set apart for your own purposes, not set apart for your political purposes, not set apart for your work purposes, but set apart for the purposes of God. So maybe your first instinct is, is like, yeah, well, yeah, I I follow God. I, I, I try to be better. I try not to do bad things. But my question is, are you truly walking in holiness? Like when you look at yourself in the mirror, do you see something that's holy? I mean, you got to ask yourself, is is the way that I talk to people holy? Is my language holy? Is the way that I treat people in person or online, is it holy? Is my attitude holy? Is the way that I work holy? All of these things are to be holy, to be set apart for God. The other word we're going to talk about correlates right in with holiness, and that's righteousness. Being self-righteous means somebody in their own eyes declare that they are very good, that they are perfect, that they are without guilt or without sin. It's typically not a good thing when we say it in that context. Righteousness simply means to be without sin, to be perfect, to be without guilt, to be in right standing with God. And so again, you got to ask yourself, am I truly righteous? The answer is simply no. You're not righteous. You're not holy on your own accord. Let me let me read another passage for you. Romans 3, verse 10 through 12. As it is written, no one is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. You're not righteous on your own, but yet that's what you're called to. That's a pretty big standard, right? And see, here's the thing is another way to put this is we were called to be perfect and actually explicitly so in Matthew 5 verse 48. Now see here, Jesus is comparing what they're doing right now versus the people who are not of God. And he's talking about them versus Gentiles, right? But then he finishes it by saying this, you therefore must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. This is a high standard that we've been called to. What I don't want you to hear me saying is you have to be these things before you can receive salvation before you can give your life to the Lord. That's not the point. We hear all the time that grace is free. And sometimes we don't treat grace as free. We treat it as cheap. Something that's cheap is something that's abundant, something that you can get anywhere. It's common. People who treat grace as if it's a cheap grace use it like an inexhaustible well of forgiveness. Like They don't really try to change their behavior. They don't pursue holiness. They don't pursue righteousness. They don't pursue perfection. Instead, they just kind of live their lives. They claim to know Jesus, and then they tap into that cheap grace well when they need forgiveness. But free grace is grace that is not earned, but that costs you everything. And so what that means is before you come to know Jesus, you don't have to be righteous. But that free grace that you receive, not on your own merit, actually costs you everything. No longer are you Lord of your life, but you've made Jesus Lord over your life. The really important distinction here is that we don't treat this grace as cheap, even though we receive it freely, that it costs us everything. Because what does he say? John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And one of his commandments was, you better be perfect because your heavenly father's perfect. And so these are huge, huge things that we're supposed to strive for as believers. You were not called to a mediocre life. And this is not one of those self-help things. It's like, you're going to be the best. You're going to be wealthy. You're gonna... That's not what this is. You are not called to a mediocre life of holiness. You are called to be holy as the heavenly father is holy. You are called to be righteous as he is righteous. You are not called to just be a better person and kind of scoot by. Sometimes we treat Jesus like he's our get out of hell free card and that's about it. But that's not what his intention for us is. Here's the good news. I know it sounds hard because it is hard. It's actually impossible for you under your own merit. You can't become perfect, righteous, or holy. I want to encourage you with this. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For our sake, 
our sake. He made him to be sin who knew no sin, speaking of Jesus, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So that in Jesus, through his sacrifice, from him bearing our sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. We might become blameless before God. Now, does that mean that when you give your life to the Lord that you're never going to sin again? No, not necessarily, though you should be pursuing that. I think in a life, if we could live a life perfectly in the Spirit, it would be without sin. But what we can't do is go back to that cheap grace and, ah, well, I'll solve that later. I'll submit that to the Lord later. No, He called you to submit those things to Him now, to lay your life down for Him so that you can receive His grace and mercy. Jesus commanded us to be perfect, and we can only pursue this holiness, this perfection, and this righteousness through a life lived through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go back to John 14 real quick. Actually, we're going to start in 15, which is where we just were. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom this world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. He sent us a helper. He sent us an advocate. He sent us a counselor to be the power of which we're able to walk out this life. See, there's this misconception that the Lord's never going to ask anything of us or give us anything or put us through anything that's more than we can handle. It's not true. It may be more than we can handle in our flesh, right, and on our own, but we can do all things through him who gives us strength, right? We can go through persecution. We can go through trial. We can learn to submit ourselves to him. We can grow in that holiness and righteousness, even though it's hard because he's the one that's empowering us. And so for the believer today, here's my encouragement to you. I want to remind you of what you're called to, which is that holiness and that righteousness and that perfection. And I want to encourage you by saying, even though you feel like you fail sometimes, it's because you're working under your own power and not resting on the power of the Lord. He's given you your whole, His Holy Spirit so that you don't have to do it on your own and He will sanctify you over time in that. And for those of you who maybe are not believers or what I would consider nominal believers, maybe you claim Jesus, but you haven't really submitted your life to Him as Lord, I would say, hey, you need to do some, you need to be asking some questions, right? Uh, submitting to him, confessing him as Lord of your life is part of the salvation process. And so if you haven't done that, if you're not submitting all those areas of your life to him, if you're really living in sin and not pursuing holiness, righteousness, and perfection, you're living in rebellion against the holy God. You're living in sin. And so I want to encourage you to take a look at those things and uh, maybe refine those things, submit those things to the Lord. So guys, stop living a mediocre life that's still full of sin. That's not what he's called us to. He's called us to a holy, righteous, and blameless life. And so let's walk with him. Let's trust in him. Let's lean on him for the power to do what he's called us to do. And let's just move forward in that direction of holiness, righteousness, and perfection. And so that's it for us today, guys. That's all we're going to do. Um, if you're already a part of our church, we'll see you Sunday. If you're not, uh, we're at 306 Burns Road in Carrollton, Georgia. See you at 10 o'clock Sunday morning. And other than that, see you.